Hi everyone, this is Fierce Little Jewels here, and today I'll be showing you stuff around the house you can use for polymer clay tools. Uh, these are makeshift items, or uh, maybe a DIY if you may. So yeah, let's get started. Um, stuff you can use for texturing are um, these black peppercorns. Do not use white peppercorns or any other color peppercorns because black peppercorns are the only ones with a wrinkled exterior. So yeah. There's ridges and grooves, so you could use for texturing. If not, you can use uh, an aluminum ball, aluminum foil ball. So to texture, you just put it in your finger like so, and depending on how much pressure you put on it, you would texture more or less. So I put uh, barely any pressure for, um, for the aluminum foil, and I got this texture. Uh, focus, there. And you can also achieve the same thing, but with smaller results with the black peppercorn. Like so. I would use the black peppercorn uh, for smaller items like, um, like onigiri, making, realis uh, making realistic foods that are small. Or I would use these and make it into long uh, cylindrical shapes, uh, the aluminum, and uh, use them for making breads. So yeah, these are some stuff you can use for texturing. Another thing you can use for texturing is a uh, uh, toothbrush. And remember, you can only use this for uh, polymer clay only. Do not try brushing your teeth with this. That would be very bad. So yeah, to texture, just press down like so. And you can also use this for texturing uh, cookies. Baked goods such as breads or again onigiri. I personally like using this texture for uh, breads or like pancakes or something. So yeah, that's what that looks like. I don't know if you can really see. So yeah, that's what that looks like. Um, another thing you can use for texturing is this. I don't know if you know what this is, but this is something uh, I use for uh, my Etsy for my Etsy shop. Uh, this is a necklace option, and this is broken here, so I didn't want to sell that. So um, to use this for texturing, you know, sometimes you have to dot. Instead of wasting your time dotting, just press it in like so, and you have like instant dotting right there. And you can also use a comb, like so, if you're lazy, like me, to just put in dots without doing anything at all. Stuff like this I would use to border hearts or something, which is really cool. Just line it, since this is really flexible, line it up however you like. And then grab a, a flat surface and, or your hands and push on top. Then slowly uh, take it off and you can see the textured pattern. So yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. Also, if you uh, don't want to be lazy or just want to be manual with it, um, you could use a skewer or a uh, toothpick. And you can also use a paper clip that I bent like this so you could poke holes into it, like so. Or with a skewer, like so. But you don't have to uh, use those either. If you wanted a finer, a finer uh, texture, you can use a lead pencil. I have 09, 07, and 05. But yeah, you can use these for texturing as well. Also, to repurpose your uh, old pens, this isn't an old pen, but this is just something I have laying around. You could also repurpose your old pens by using it for this purpose. So yeah, you can see the large holes I made. These make pretty large holes, so if you want to, you can use it. If not, you can use a finer one. This is an O3 um, art pen. I don't want to waste it, so yeah, you can use that as well. Um, you can also use needles, like these. I bought these at Daiso for $1.50. Everything at Daiso is $1.50, unless marked Otherwise, so yeah, I'll be uh, showing you a tutorial with this about this later on how to make uh, polymer clay tools. 
So yeah, this is pretty fine as well. So yeah, you can see all the different uh, uh, dottings we did with that. And also, another thing you could use for dotting are head pins. These make, uh, depending on the size, the bottom of the head pins are never ever exactly the same. So yeah, these make pretty big holes. Or you can use the leftovers of your head pins to dot too. So yeah. And speaking of dotting, <clears throat> this is a nail dotting tool. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty bad nail dotting tool. So I'm only using this for charm purposes. Uh, dotting, you can also use to uh, help paint some of your items. So you can see all the dots I made with different types of stuff. So yeah, those are all the stuff that you can use for dotting and texturing. Um, for cutters, er almost every household should have something like this. It's kind of like a necessity. This is an X-Acto box, an X-Acto knife box. And uh, there are different X-Acto knives in here. And there are many spare blades. So yeah, this is a must have, or if not, you could go check in the garage or something if you have it. This is a must have for any polymer clay artist because this is not a unitasker. And these are really good for cutting. But if you're like me and do not want to buy anything new, I mean not new, um, anything too expensive, I bought 10 of these blades from Daiso. And these are really good cutters. And they're a lot cheaper than the poly blades. So yeah, they make really good cuts. Another cutter you can use that may be uh, lying around the house. Oh, and this is from a box cutter. So if you have a box cutter, yeah, you can just take that out. Um, in my uh, video uh, previously, I have showed how to make polymer clay cutters. I'll put the link in there somewhere. And I used Ikea candles. And I turned this into a cutter. This can be a circle cutter if you want. And these uh, cut really well. Oops. Yeah, but this is really sticky clay. Uh, and I transformed these into cutters like these. Crimp cutters. And I made different types of cutters. So yeah, check out the link if you want to see how I made these. So yeah, you can make these by yourself very easy. Another way you could, uh, another makeshift uh, polymer clay cutter. You may not realize it, but just like uh, with cheese cutters, they're like cheese wire cutters. But this is floss, but I, I, I am using floss because I couldn't find the string. But if you could find a very thin, strong string, that'd be the best you can use. But since I can't find that, I'm using this. So this can also be used as a polymer clay cutter. It won't be as sharp a cut as the box cutter would, but yeah, it still gets the job done. Okay. So yeah, other than that, uh, these are all the polymer clay cutters. Stuff you can use around the house for, um, for rolling out your polymer clay would be anything flat, really. You could use your highlighter, this highlighter, to roll it out flat like so. Pers oops. <laughs> Personally, I like using my X-Acto knife for this purpose. And also, I cannot find it right now, but I have a small rolling pin. Oh, here it is. I have a small rolling pin I got from Daiso, but I didn't like it as much because, yeah, it's way too small, but I guess it gets the job done, so I like that too. Um, small rolling pins uh, can be useful, but who really does have a small rolling pin lying around? So you can use uh, the X-Acto knife from your X-Acto set, a uh, highlighter pen, uh, any flat, round item, basically, or you can use dowels. I don't have one, and I don't feel like breaking one out from my closet. So um, dowels are these uh, thin, circular um, pieces of wood that are usually polished. So yeah, those are really good um, rollers. So sorry, I couldn't show you that. Um, so yeah, that's all the makeshift uh, 
items around the house that you can use for polymer clay. And I hope this uh, tutorial was um, helpful to you. And yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!